Hey, Algebra. We are in Unit 2, Lesson 20, um, talking about a dinner party. So we're going to get dinner for a drama club on the evening of their first rehearsal. Um, the budget for dinner is $60. Karen needs to... Karen plans to buy some prepared dishes from the supermarket. The prepared dishes are sold by the pound at five twenty nine dollars a pound. He also plans to buy two large bottles of sparkling water at $2.49 a piece. Represent the constraints in the situation mathematically. If you use variables, specify um, what each one means. So let's try number one first. Um, first of all, we have um, prepared dishes, five twenty nine a pound, and water at two forty nine a pound, and the budget is sixty dollars. So we need to do sixty dollars or less. Um, let's do P for prepared dishes, and B for bottles of water. Seems, seems good, except we know how many bottles of water, don't we? So we can just do that. All right, so there is an um, inequality, and we'd say P is prepared dishes. How many pounds of prepared dishes can Karen buy? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make this an equation and multiply that, which is $4.98. And I'm gonna find what P can equal. $5.29 P. So divide both sides by 529. Let's see. Calculator 529. My answer is 10.4 and some change. So how many pounds prepared dishes? Um Ooh, that should be equal, less than or equal to. Sorry, that's a mistake on my part. Um, it has to be 10.4 pounds. Um, but let's think about, because it can't be exactly. Exactly means that's how much, um, how many pounds to spend exactly $60. Um, I need to spend, or I need to buy less than or equal to 10.4 pounds to stay within budget. So, yep, there we go. Okay. Han is about to mow some lawns in his neighborhood. His lawnmower has a five gallon fuel tank, but Han is not sure how much gasoline is in the tank. He knows, however, that the lawnmower uses 0.4 gallons of gasoline per hour of mowing. I don't know how Han knows that, but hey, that's pretty cool. What are all the possible values for X? The number of hours Han can mow without refilling the mower. Hmm. Write one or more inequalities to represent your response. Be prepared to explain or show your reasoning. So if we look at this first question, five gallon fuel tank, 0.4 gallons per hour of mowing. So if we have a five gallon tank and I divide by 0.4, be 0.4, that right there is going to represent how many hours, right? Five gallons, 0.4, gallons per hour. If I did that division, my answer would be um, in hours. So I know I have um, hours less than or equal to that 5 over 0.4. Um, if I actually did that division, get your handy dandy calculator out, 5 divided by 0.4 is actually 12.5. But 
Think about that constraint of hours. Um, if I did a number line, that means at 12.5, I did a closed dot, it could be anything below 12.5, like negative numbers, <laughs> um, etc. Sorry, that's silly. Um, right? But we're talking hours for our x value. Therefore, negative numbers can't be possible. So we really need two constraints here. My hours have to be greater than or equal to x and smaller than or equal to 12.5. So we really have two constraints, two limits um, on, or two restrictions on our domain, two restrictions on our input. So um, we have to remember that we have to think about real life situations where um, we can't have negative numbers. Extra page, sorry. If we look here, this is where things get a little bit tricky and I couldn't fit everything on one slide. So um, we have two slides, but you have your paper in front of you and lots of space, right? All right, here we have Andre and Priya um, used different strategies to solve the following inequality, but reached the same, same solution. Make sense of each strategy until you can explain what each student has done. So we're going to, if we see that split down the middle, we have Andre and Priya. So let's talk about Andre first. Well, let's look at our equation first, our inequality. I have 2 times an expression is less than 18 minus x. Let's see what Andre did with it. Um, Andre changed that inequality into an equality right there and then distributed the two, left the right side alone. Um, it looks like we subtracted 18 from both sides, subtracted 4x from both sides, um, divided both sides by negative 5 and got x equals 3. So let's take that x equals 3 and I think about a number line, there's three. Now we're gonna test on both sides of three. So if we test four and pause. So let's test that four and see what happens. Test to see if x equals four is a solution back in the inequality. Two times the quantity, two times four plus 1.5. So that right there is 9.5. 2 times 9.5 is 17. Um, 18 minus 4 is 14. Is 17 less than 14? No. So the inequality is false, so 4 is not a solution. If a number greater than 3 is not a solution, the solution must be less than 3. Or less than 3. I would always write it like this. X is less than 3. All right, let's look at Priya. So Priya took her, equa her inequality and set it equal to an equation and got x, is less, x equals 3. Um, so now look, look here. In 4x plus 3 equals 18 minus x, which is right there, there is a 4x on the left and a negative x on the right. If x is a negative number, 4x plus 3 could be positive or negative, but 18 minus x will always be positive. For 4x plus 3 is less than 18 minus x to be true, x must include negative numbers or x must be less than 3. So Priya used reasoning to figure it out. Andre used guess and check. Okay, both valid reasons. Now let's see what I put on the next slide. All right, here are four inequalities. Um, work with a partner to decide on at least two inequalities to solve. Solve one e inequality using Andre's strategy by testing values on either side of the given solution while your partner uses Priya's strategy by reasoning about the parts of the inequality. Switch strategies for the other inequality. Um, yeah, we're in a video, so for you to break off with a partner 
is kind of inconvenient. Um, so I would love it if you would just practice some of these and see if they make sense. Um, I'm going to talk through a few of them. Um, if I look at the first one, one-fifth P is greater than negative 10. Um, I don't like fractions, so I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 5. Uh, if I multiply the left side by 5, I get just a plain old P. And P is greater than negative 10. How does this work? If I think about reasoning, um, that's Priya's strategy. If x is a negative number that is far away from 0, say negative, um, I can't use x though, if p. If p is a negative number that's far away from 0, say negative 100, um, then 1 fifth of p will be less than, not greater than, negative 10. So if I look at the original, oh sorry, I just saw my mistake. I hope I didn't confuse you. There we go. Um, so if we go to the original equation and say, okay, P is a really big or a really small number far away from zero. If I plug that into the original equation, um, one fifth of negative 100, um, let's see, sorry. One fifth of X will be less than, not greater than negative 10. This means the solution must be must include positive numbers, so the solution must be greater than negative 50. Okay? So the solution must be greater than negative 50, which is what we solved for it. If I look at B, um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute those 4s. So I have 4x plus 28 is less than or equal to 8x plus 32. Okay. Um, I'm not going to use Priya's strategy this time. Let's use Andre's strategy. So if I solve this, let's see, 32 minus 28. 9, 10, 11, 12, plus 8x. These are now equal signs. Um, subtract 8x, subtract 8x. Negative 4x equals 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. x equals negative 1. Now I'm going to test, um, test a number smaller. If I test 0, because I like testing 0, um, that would, 0 into x would wipe that out, 0 into x, and we would say, is 28 less than 32? That is in fact true. 28 is less than um, 32, because I tested x equals 0. So our solution has to include x equals 0. So we need x to be bigger than or equal to negative 1 because that includes zero. If we did a number line, negative one is here, and then zero, and then one. Sorry, I will give you the answers to C and D so you can test them yourself. For C, I have X is greater than negative four. You can use Andre's or Priya's method. And then D, X is less than six. Cool? All right. All right. Matching inequalities and solutions. So if we look at this one, it says match each inequality to a graph that represents its solutions. Be prepared to explain or show your reasoning. So before we can match each inequality to a graph, we need to simplify them a little bit or even solve them. If I look at number one, 6x is less than or equal to 3x, I need to solve this. I cannot divide both sides by 3x. We learned that back when we were going over equalities. So if I subtract both sides, I get 3x is less than or equal to 0. x is less than or equal to 0. So that one's going to be pretty easy to graph. 
um, because it was a sort of an easier equation. I need to look for a closed dot at zero and shading to the left. So that one right there is number one. I think it'd be easier to go like that or like this, right? So if I look at two, first we have to solve it. If we were in the classroom today, we'd be splitting this up and solving them all. To get rid of those fractions, I need to multiply by the biggest number. So that means this one would cancel out when I distribute, and this one would be a two. You can check that with your calculator. So I end up with x is greater than negative two. So let's look at the graphs and see where negative two has an open dot and it's shaded to the right. Okay, why don't you go ahead and work through the rest of those and I will write some answers down. I'm not gonna solve each of them here, but I'd be happy to help you in class. Number three, our solution is x is less than or equal to two, which is graph B. That is number three. Number four solves to x is less than one half, which is graph D. That's a D. Um, so four is D. Five, the solution is, the solution set is x is greater than negative one half. So number five is x is greater than one, negative one half, which is graph A. And number six, the solution set is x is greater than or equal to two. So that is number six, which is C. There you go. Okay, this does take practice, but I know you guys will get it. Um, we can go over any of the solution sets that you didn't get or weren't able to come up with um, when we come back to class. Email me with any questions.